Hi, welcome back to Your Body, Mind, and Home, and this is Jigsaw Puzzles, The Hard Part. So, um, just to refresh your memory, uh, my suggestions are to do uh, sorting of the edge pieces, and then um, instead of sorting through the edge pieces again, I have skipped that part of it now, and I just go right to sorting by color and uh, texture. And then you go and you take a little section uh, where the pieces are mostly the same uh, that you think is going to be one piece of the puzzle, one section of the puzzle. And you um, arrange them uh, by orientation. So if there's any kind of pattern that you can see that's horizontal or vertical, um, walls, trees, um, you know, where you can see where the up and down is anything like that, uh, you sort the pieces and orient them uh, according to that, and then you put those little pieces together, and then you go on from there. So this puzzle was a little different. First of all, it's only 500 pieces, so I thought even though it was a, uh, a difficult, I could tell it was going to be a difficult subject, I thought, you know, it shouldn't be that hard. So I started on it. I thought initially it really wasn't going to be that hard. Uh, this is the picture, and you can see it's basically two colors, white and uh, green-brown mixed snow kind of a thing. So um, in this case, I actually did the white pieces first because um, there weren't that many of them, and I did the solid whites in one section, and then I did the whites with a little bit of color around them in another section. And I actually started with the frame because I didn't know where else to start. I usually don't do that. I usually start right with the little pictures, but I started with the frame uh, where it was white and I put all the white pieces in there. And I'll, I'll show you how I sorted those because um, it's different from what uh, I've done you know, otherwise. But the solid white pieces I sort in a certain order and then I started putting those together and then anything that had mostly white with an edge of another color, I would fit in there. Then I had a section that was white uh, with a lot of other colors. So it would have one entire border of white or two borders of white and then other colors. And that's how I went about it, you know, because it's a daunting puzzle otherwise. So when I got uh, those sections filled in, this is what I ended up with. Okay, so as you can see from this, I have um, mostly the middles of trees that aren't done. So those are the most difficult. Some of these trees, you could tell the orientation because um, they're skinny. And so uh, that was a little bit easier and they had a lot of white around them, especially the skinny ones had a lot of white around them, so uh, it was easier to tell how they fit together. But then you have all of these middle parts of the trees, and these are the pieces for, for, those, for that part of the puzzle. So over here, I have the pieces that are just all muddled. <laughs> they don't have any uh, anything any distinguishing features so I put them all over here and then down here are pieces that still have a little bit of uh, either white background or um, solid you know more of a solid blue so so these over here have sort of a solid dark color edge um, that might make them you know easier to to find a place for and these over here, wait, where are they? They got a little messed up, but, so these are all pieces that have a little head, what I call the head, um, that's got a little bit of difference of the color. So you can see they have little hats or something. That's kind of how I think of them, or a different color head. So those I have over here for when I notice that I need something like that. But these, these down here, see this one has a little, uh, little blue shoulder. Um, this has a white uh, shoulder. So I just sort of have a few of those over here. This one has 
um, a little blue area right there. So those, I think I'm gonna notice where to put them by the color. But these over here, there's just no way. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is, what I did here is I sorted them. And I sorted them by shape, by the shape of the piece itself. Um, because there's, at this point, there's really no other way to do it. And I sort them not just um, by the like pieces, but I do a gradation here. So this is top and bottom head with side cutouts. This has just the top head with three cutouts and then two heads in, a, in adjacent uh, edges, then three, and then here's one that's four. And sometimes I also have down here, I'll have one, a few pieces that have no head. You know, they, they just have the cutouts. So this way, I then go to the puzzle and I look for something that uh, will, you know, narrow down the number of pieces I have to look at. So if you look at this one right here, there's three pieces, there's three heads. So I can fit in here only pieces with three heads or four heads. Well, that eliminates all the pieces down here and all I have to look at are the pieces up here. And so then I look at, uh, you know, an aspect of it. So here I'm seeing there's a dark, um, oh no, here it is. This is the one I'm looking for. Um, there's a dark edge to it. And, you know, it's sort of in the middle. So then I look over here and I'm looking for pieces that just have uh, that right shoulder, basically, that has um, kind of a solid, solid look to it. And let me see with this one. Yeah, so that one fit. So I didn't have to look at a ton of pieces. I only had like 15 pieces to look at to try to figure out, you know, if they fit. If I go up here, you'll see I have one here that's got either one head or, or two heads opposite each other. So that really narrows down how many pieces I have to look at. And this shoulder is gonna be, I think, you can't always tell, but I think this shoulder is gonna be, have some light background. So then I look down here. So because it's gonna have a light background and I put the ones down here, that have um, mostly, uh, that have some distinguishing light colored features. Um, I'm gonna be looking at this one and this one has a left shoulder that's kind of white and it only has, it has two nids in this case, two heads. And that fits in there. So I might, you know, when I did this, um, of course, I figured out these uh, a little bit ahead of time, but really it only took me at this point, you know, I, I pick up like the five pieces that look like they're going to fit in there and then I just try them all out and then I put the ones that don't work back and if none of them work, I put them back, but I make sure that I don't try the same pieces again and that's how I go through the rest of the puzzle. So, you know, I, I know in the other video, I suggested staying away from things like clouds and, uh, you know, snow and, and oceans, things like that. And, you know, sometimes there's just a really beautiful picture you wanna do and it has those things. And so, you know, I'm not that um, patient, but I've just come across this method that, you know, since I discovered this method, I never get so frustrated that I give up on a puzzle. And I have done that before, because if I can't make, uh, you know, some progress as I'm doing it, I really, you know, I get too frustrated and, you know, who wants to be frustrated? So, you know, what's, what's good for me is to just keep, keep moving and having this sorting uh, mechanism for the things like clouds and, uh, really dark areas and really white areas. I did this for the white uh, pieces that I was talking about before. 
and it really, it just makes it manageable, breaks it down. Okay, I just wanna show you one more tip I have for accessories. Um, what I'm showing you here is just a little drop cloth that I made from um, a leftover sheet that I had uh, used to make other things out of. So you can see there's a couple of pieces that I've dropped there and they're really obvious. Um, there's a couple of pieces right off the edge of it that um, are not so easy to see. And in this, uh, this puzzle has very shiny pieces, so it's better, it's easier to see them on the rug. But when you have pieces that have no gloss to them and they're um, earth tones, they get completely lost in this rug. So this having this drop cloth, things drop, but they don't roll when they drop and they don't bounce because this is um, flannel. It, they just sort of plop where they are and it just makes it a lot easier. I, I often lose pieces, you know, while I'm, while I'm doing the puzzle and this makes it obvious if I dropped any and it makes them easy, easier to pick up. One last accessory I just wanted to mention was Ziploc bags, gallon size. They're perfect for, you know, 500 to 1,000 piece puzzles. And uh, I like to give my puzzles away and I don't like getting puzzles that are missing pieces. So I only give puzzles away that I have all the pieces for and um, I put them in the Ziploc bags and that way um, when I pass them on, if the box gets damaged or falls or anything like that, uh, the puzzle pieces are not gonna go anywhere. So that's what I do. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Please uh, like or subscribe and uh, you know, make any comments you'd like to make, ask questions. Um, thanks for, for joining me, bye-bye.